Well, hi everyone, this is Bob the Science Guy, and today we're going to have a relatively short video, at least for a change. Uh, no discussion of the Flat Earth community and the Flat Earth response to the final experiment can be complete without discussing the concept of narcissism. Now, I heard a great term the other day, a phrase that just really set it up for me very nicely. A narcissist is a person who wets the bed and then blames the blanket. So in this video, we're going to talk about two things. First of all, what does the term narcissist mean and what kind of personality does it entail? And the other thing is, how does a narcissist operate? We're going to go over the concept of DARVO. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, over the past few days, I've gone over a number of responses by the Flat Earth community to the final experiment. Some of those responses came from somebody by the name of Nathan Oakley. And he runs a channel called the Flat Earth Debate. In that channel, he is the host, and then he has a panel. And people come in and talk with him. And he has a very interesting style of approaching these people that come in and talk to him, especially if they're other Flat Earthers that don't agree with him, or if they are people like myself from the science community that don't agree with him because he's wrong. Now, if you watched the video yesterday, you saw him kind of melt down a little bit on this. He went after globe earthers. He went after other flat earthers. Uh, he talked about having a purge of the flat earth community. And this is just his style. Now, Nathan Oakley, in, in my opinion, and it's not a diagnosis, has got a lot of narcissistic tendencies. So what exactly is a narcissist? Now, this is just basically something off of the internet that talks a little bit about some of the characteristics of a narcissistic personality style. Uh, an exaggerated sense of self-importance. They really think they're the best thing out there. They know more than everybody else. Uh, anybody who doesn't follow their lead, obviously, is beneath them. Uh, they have a lack of empathy. They really don't care about the feelings of others. They have a sense of entitlement. Uh, when they say things, it should be accepted as gospel and not questioned. And if they are questioned, they react rather violently to it. Preoccupation with power, beauty, or success. Well, it should be rather apparent that people like Nathan want to be the leaders of the Flat Earth community, and they think that that title should simply be bestowed upon them. Uh, arrogance? Well, most definitely. Very arrogant. In the Flat Earth community, I've used the term the arrogance of ignorance many times. They're extremely exploitative. And by exploitative, I don't mean they raise money uh, for their YouTube channel. That's just a pretty common thing. I'm raising money for my telescope fund. The difference is, is that I don't hurt other people for my own gain. And that's generally not the case with a, a true narcissist. They really not only don't care about the feelings of others, they have no problem using others to advance their own position. And insecurity. For example, Nathan has a mute button, and any time he is challenged, uh, he just mutes the person and then talks over them. You know, most of us were at one time children, and we're familiar with the concept of the schoolyard bully. And one of the best ways to deal with a schoolyard bully is to confront them. The first time somebody stands up to them and bloodies their nose, they back right down. It's because they're basically insecure. You know, a long time ago in a galaxy far away, I was an officer in the United States Army. And one of the things that gave me the most pleasure from that position of leadership, one of the things that kind of defined my leadership style, was mission first and men always. I had a job to do. That job got done. But if I could help the men and women under my command along the way, that was great. I loved getting people promoted to E4. Uh, if they did an exceptionally good job, you know, there's an award that you can put in for that. And that'll help them when they go on to become an NCO. The purpose of that was to bolster their confidence, to build their skill set, and prepare them for more responsibility in the future. A narcissist, on the other hand, is entitled to be the leader. And in many cases, that leadership is at the expense of other people. A narcissist can't win unless somebody else loses. You know, many of us have had employers, we've had bosses. Is a good boss somebody that promotes you and then fires you two weeks later so that it hurts more, as I've heard one boss say he regularly did? No, it's not. You're put into a position of leadership to accomplish a goal and promote the success of those under you. Now, when I originally went into the Army, I enlisted as a medic, and I was in basic training at Fort Jackson. My brother was in one of the academies, and he wrote me a letter in basic training. 
And he said, Bob, half the victory in a mind game is knowing that you're in one. So the next thing that I want to talk about is something called DARVO, which is a typical technique used by narcissists to try and maintain control. And if you go into these Flat Earth chats, you'll see this in action. So what exactly is DARVO? Now DARVO is an acronym that stands for Deny, Attack, and then Reverse the Victim and the Offender. And as noted here, you see this a lot in domestic violence issues. Now, a few years ago, Nathan was having a rather animated discussion with a globe earther by the name of Rumpus. And during the course of this, Nathan was becoming more and more agitated. His daughter interrupted him and grabbed his tablet. You heard a slap, and the daughter started screaming. Then the sound cut. Rumpus continued for just a second or two more and then said, Did you just hit your daughter? And Nathan came back on and said that, Oh no, she just fell. This is a very typical technique used to avoid responsibility. Again, you wet the bed and blame the blanket. In this case, instead of admitting that he had hit his daughter or excusing himself and going on mute to take care of the situation, he blamed his daughter for what he did. Now we'll talk about this in the next episode where we discuss the idea of a narcissistic injury, which means that you challenge a narcissist and their typical response, which is generally over the top. But let's get back to DARVO. To put this in context of something that's going on right now, so let's look at the final experiment. Now the final experiment went to Antarctica and the Globers down there did a number of scientific observations. Um, the most basic of which is, was there a 24-hour sun? Something that Nathan has denied in the past. The first thing he did was deny that he ever said anything about that. And he went on to say that they had already invalidated the Gleason map eight months ago and they didn't really care one way or the other. There's no significance to it. That's the denial part. Then he went on the attack. Witsit is a Freemason. Witsit is a government shill. Witsit betrayed the flat earth community. Witsit needs to be excommunicated. Where's John Wick's cell number? And we've seen that already in this series. Now, after he got done attacking Witsit, and actually he continued to attack Witsit, but let's just move on to the next part. Uh, he reversed the victim and the offender. So Witsit suddenly became the bad person. Nathan was utterly justified and reasonable in the attacks that he laid on Witsit. Witsit hurt Nathan's business. He's the victim here. So now that you know the basic concept of Darvo, Go ahead and download the Flat Earth Bingo card that I've put into the description of this video. Go back to yesterday's video, which was the 17 minute video where Nathan was just ranting and raging over the misfortune uh, that the final experiment has brought to his channel and his position in the Flat Earth world. See if you can fill out that bingo card. Pick out the elements of Darvo. And in tomorrow's episode, we're going to go over some of the strategies that a narcissist will use to attack you. Recall that they'll not only attack your evidence, they will attack you personally. And what are the strategies that you can use to counter that? So until then, this is Bob the Science Guy. Thank you very much for stopping by. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And if you get notifications, you'll know when these videos come out. I'm going to be posting them pretty regularly until probably at least the 12th or the 13th when I go back to school. If you are interested in helping with the telescope fund, the link to the Patreon and the PayPal is right in the description. So until next time, take care.